future albums? We wouldn't really know. I mean, it worked really well for that album just because we had the program drums all throughout. So it's just one of us, either one of us, would just sit there, okay, well, you do that, you do like that, okay, let me just, and, and I program like a part for that, and, and we just keep going with like just chip seats and we we'll just keep going like that. I, I'm not sure we'll, we'll do another album like. In that very matter, you know, but, but uh, you never know. Yeah. It's definitely an ingenious process. It's a weird one. It's a, well, it's a, it's a different one, yeah. you know, but, but it, it worked for what that album was. Yeah. The experiment that that album yeah. was, even though each album for us is definitely to some extent experimenting with stuff, but, but yeah. that one was really like the Meshuggah experimental project, you know. And, and for what it was, it really worked well. Yeah, really nice. nice, very nice. Um, are all uh, the drum tracks on Austin track naturally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like drum system around. But we did exchange like the drum room that we have. Is, like, it doesn't sound very good in there. It's really kind of a pipe sounding room. And it doesn't have any boom to it. Like, gotcha. So the drums are really kind of harsh sounding in there. Uh, so basically what you still hear from the live drumming is basically what you hear through the overheads and to some extent in the distance microphones and all that. Because all the like the, the close mics had the close mic heads they were exchanged with sound the ones like with the toms and the kicks. So just, they just sound way better and you got so much more control. Uh, we did that for the snare too. Usually you know how it is when you mic stuff and you want to like tweak the snare drum, you get the high end in there. Right. As soon as you want to go like on the high end and tweak that. It's really hard to get a good balance. Like, once we just had like the whole like high as a simple package, you use that from the, the actual mics, and then we exchange like all the hits uh, with with, um, with sound ones, the same kick as well. You have total separation, and you don't have to worry about a thing. And it's a lot easier to get the kind of drum sound that we have on this album it would be very hard to get in that studio. You would have to have a really awesome room and you know, a drum room like and we, you know, we don't have the money to spend. <laughs> or at least we'd rather not, you know. Right. Because that, that would be really expensive. So. Maybe sometime down the road you never Yeah, know. yeah, maybe. I I'd, I'd love to do it that way, you know, basically. Come on, the drummers are just as important as everybody else. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's not that though. I don't really mind. I don't really care okay. I don't really care about the means to, to get somewhere. I don't it's all about the final result, and I don't really right. care too much of how bands do things or if it's live drums or not live drums. It's if the vocalist is actually on keyboards, I don't, I don't care. It's all about the, the final product. Nice. That's kind of how we feel about it. You know, the whole band. Yeah, the well, every final product has come out very well. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, pretty, pretty. We're pretty proud of most of them. So, how do you feel as far as the response? From the new release, as far as the, response the sales, the shows, shows, yeah, everything's been crazy, crazy. Yeah, reviews and, and all that, like press and, and sales, all that has been really great. So yeah, it's been really so nice, nice. Well, uh, we'll wrap this up. I won't take too much of your time. Uh, one last question: uh, SickDrummer.com is going to be turning into Sick Drummer Magazine. All right, right. So, uh, real quick, your thoughts on a Sick Drummer Magazine? Awesome. Awesome. So focus on metal and kind of, well, not, maybe just metal, but like yes. drumming intense type of music. Focusing directly yeah. on... Not a day too late. What's that? Not a day too late. <laughs> Never. No, you should. Yeah, that sounds like it. That sounds like a great idea. Yes. Yeah, so it's I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely look at that. What that would, would it be like on a monthly basis, or what we're thinking about doing is it's going to be uh, digital as well as tangible in your hand. Yeah, it would be like um, probably like a quarterly issue, like every right. three months ish, yeah. and it would be like a in review of what has happened in the last couple of months, everything that's happened, that's going on, and gonna happen. And then we'll do like where so many thousands of people will get an automatic link or an actual digital. Magazine will show up in their inbox, their email, and they'll open it and download it. There'll be advertisements for bands, uh, MP3s automatically embedded into the pages with advertisements. I mean, you name it, it's going to be more than what an actual magazine in your hand can do, you know what I mean? Plus, so. That sounds cool. Just wanted to bring you back on it. <laughs> All right, so well, thank you very much. I do appreciate all your time.
It has been a pleasure, and I look forward to the show tonight. Right on.